And here are five things that have changed forever because of the coronavirus pandemic. What's up everyone, welcome back to free to be David here and thank you for joining me for this video. Now in today's video, I wanna go over five things that have changed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And these are things that might have changed anyways, but because of the pandemic, they've kind of expedited in terms of changing for the future. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all bad changes, but they are changes nonetheless, so I thought I'd share these five with you today. But before I get started, as always, if you are new to my channel, I cover financial literacy here in an effort to track my progress to financial independence, and hopefully by doing that, I'm creating some valuable content that can help others in their pursuit of financial independence as well. So if you're new to my channel and haven't done so already and are interested in financial literacy, please take a moment and just click the subscribe button down down below. I really do appreciate the support and I promise to keep putting out valuable content every single week. And if you're not new to the channel, thank you for joining me again. So what are these five things? These are five things that have changed and probably would have changed anyways, but are they real changes? Are these going to be things that are really going to carry on into the future as we move past this pandemic, hopefully sooner rather than later? But are these things that are really going to be changed forever in our world? Now, personally, I do think that some of these are real changes. These are things that we're just not going to be able to go back to the way they were before this pandemic took place. I think we've gotten comfortable and we're now getting used to the changes that have occurred. So we're going to be expecting these going forward. So let's just jump right into this list. So the first change on this list is with respect to employment. And the change that's occurred here is basically getting more automation in place for jobs that were a little bit more manual, a little more labor intensive in the past. So things like online shopping as opposed to going and visiting retailers brick and mortar retailers that might be a thing of the past you might not necessarily need to go shopping to a mall or strip mall or store uh, every single time you need something a lot of people are now just completing all their shopping online whether it's clothing electronics grocery shopping I mean just think of the change in the grocery world how many of you guys have actually had groceries delivered to you over the past six months I know I have and it's just a luxury that now I'm comfortable with I would be okay with having my groceries delivered to me all the time. Yes, sometimes I do like to go and pick out my own fruit and vegetables, and maybe I do that every other week, but for the majority of my grocery shopping, I'm just gonna get that delivered to me from now on. And with those changes really comes a shift in focus for current employers as well. They have to start incorporating technology into their business. I mean, if they weren't doing so before, they're going to have to start implementing some kind of teleworking policy. They're going to have to train their employees to be focused on getting automation in place where things were really just kludgy and weren't moving as efficient and ultimately that will help their business as well now what that does mean though is that the employment rate is still going to lag behind because as you start optimizing your business as you start creating efficiencies and start automating things you're going to inevitably lose some of your workforce but that doesn't necessarily mean that those people are going to be unemployed forever it just makes room for more businesses to come up in that world and newer jobs in the job market market. So if you haven't taken some time already, read up on the new technologies being implemented. Maybe sign up for some new training that you can do virtually. I know LinkedIn and careers.com, these guys offer virtual training sessions to help you learn and advance your skills so that you become more versatile and valuable in the job market. Because honestly, let's face it, if you're doing something the same way for too long, you're just going to become obsolete. You have to be willing to shift and adapt to the environment around you. Now, the second thing that I think changes forever is the world of medicine. Now, with the pandemic, there has been a crazy increase in depression and all kinds of mental health issues. In fact, I think I was reading that those numbers have increased threefold this year, which is crazy. And it goes beyond just psychiatric help online. I think there's a lot of benefits here to telemedicine. You know, we should still be going and getting our annual checkups and our wellness visits with our primary care physicians. But in those interim times, when you feel something is wrong with you, instead of having to go back to your primary care physician to then get a referral 
to a specialist, you can cut out one of those steps by doing it via telemedicine. You can just contact your doctor and say, hey, this is my what I'm feeling, and they should be able to direct you to a specialist. Then you can have your initial meeting with the specialist online as well before actually scheduling a visit. And what this does is really optimizes and creates efficiency with our medical world, with the medical practice in general, because doctors will be able to see more patients more regularly and everybody will kind of get a better sense and a better grasp on their health. Now, with all that said, obviously mental health is the biggest component that the pandemic has exposed in this country. We have all been you know, isolating for longer periods of time, not as much social interaction as maybe we were used to having. So if you are feeling any signs of depression or any kind of mental illness, please reach out and get the help that you might need. Because again, it is really important to focus on your health first and foremost, because without health, wealth is really honestly meaningless. Now, the third thing I think changes forever is travel. And what the pandemic has exposed is that a virus like this can travel so easily because we had such ease and globalization when it came to our travel. People could go from country to country with relative ease. And I think what this has exposed is that we were not quite ready for this globalization that we had uh, when it came to freedom of travel. So I think we'll be seeing a lot stricter precautions when it comes to entering new countries, when it comes to getting a visa or permission mission to enter into a different country, you're going to have to show certain things that you have done, certain safety measures you have taken. Maybe you have to verify that you're not ill at the time. Maybe you have to have proven that you have been quarantined or done some kind of treatment before you're ready to enter the country, whether that's a doctor's note. I don't know what it's going to be, but I think that the travel industry in general is going to change forever, just like it did after the terrorist attacks in 9-11 in the United States. I think there's just going to be things that have changed because it was just so easy to get this virus passed around from country to country. I mean, we saw the explosion in terms of, I mean, we saw the crazy spread and transmission of this virus over just a couple of months through hundreds and hundreds of countries. So if something like that can ravage every single country in this world so easily and so quickly, it's just inevitable that we're going to have some other kinds of travel restrictions and just safety precautions in place when it comes to global travel. Now, the fourth thing I think changes forever is education. And when I say that, I'm talking about, look, I don't think schools are going to go away. Obviously, that just can't happen. And I don't think like physical presence in classrooms or any of that interaction goes away either. But what I do think will happen is that virtual curriculums will grow. People will get better at performing that kind of virtual education around the world and ultimately what that does is give teachers and schools and all kinds of institutions more flexibility when it comes to teaching kids now if you're a kid and you're missing school because you're sick you don't necessarily have to miss school you might be able to just go ahead and say hey guys I'm not feeling well I'm going to step away and not come to school for a week or two weeks and just take all my courses and do all that online so there will be a virtual component to education going forward even if we do get back in to classrooms safely, there will still always be that virtual curriculum just in case something goes wrong. Obviously, when this pandemic first went down, a lot of people weren't ready to go ahead and quickly transition and start learning and educating from home. But it is something that we're going to have to prepare for and think about because as much as we like to think that this was a one-off situation, there might be situations like this that occur again in the future and we should be prepared for that. And so I do think that this virtual curriculum will expand. People will start learning how to be better at teaching online and teaching and communicating with kids through Zoom, Skype, whatever the case may be. And ultimately, it will not denigrate the quality of education that the kids receive. And finally, the fifth thing that I think changes forever is job flexibility and job staffing. I think a lot of businesses now have really learned how to optimize their business by implementing work from home policies. But what they quickly learned is with technologies like Zoom, Slack, Microsoft, I mean, with these technologies, it's quite easy to ramp up and be just as productive and efficient. And what it ultimately means is that you can cut costs and overhead for your business by allowing your employees to work from home because you don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on office space when an employee can work from home, do the same job, connect, be engaged, and really just be just as efficient as they were in the office. And that's not to say that office spaces will go away completely because they can't, right? In the world of business, you need to have some face-to-face -face interaction, whether you're closing a sale, having a group meeting, collaborating. But I just think that now you can downsize and have smaller office spaces. 
Maybe your office space really just consists of a few different meeting rooms and a few workstations so that people can come in, work, collaborate, have their meetings, and then go home for the rest of the day. But it really does shift in terms of job staffing and jobs in general when it comes to work from home policies. I think COVID-19 has really exposed the need for the opportunity for people to work from home. If they're not feeling well, there's no reason they should be coming to the office. They should be okay and allowed to work from home for a period of a week. If you know their kids are home and being taught virtually, again, the same opportunity should be available to them to work from home. So those are the five things that I think have changed because of COVID-19 and will be changed going forward. I don't think we can revert back to the way things were on these five things. But if you guys disagree, let me know in the comments down below. If you think I missed something that would change or can change because of COVID-19, let me know that as well. If you are new to the channel, please take a moment and just click the subscribe button. If you did like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.